In this wild world, there's a whole variety of guitars, specifically acoustic guitars you may see just behind my back, all tons of body shapes, the whole variety of them. Yet, today guys, we're talking not about all these. We're talking about a specific model of a specific body shape, the 18th Dreadnought, based on the legendary Martin D18 that's now lying on my lap. The Martin D18 guitar was born about 100 years ago as a baby of an experimental strive of the Martin Guitar Company to produce a somewhat louder, thicker sounding and bassier instrument. Then the Dreadnought was born with a particular model called D18 featuring the spruce top and a mahogany back and sides, which was absolutely new, absolutely untried and absolutely unknown as a matter of what it brings. The D18 was a new thing, and one of the most important things that was new that it brought that is the fact that it had absolutely changed the image and the role of a guitar player. Before the D18, guitar players were mostly used, and I would never fear this word, they were used in the string bands and different traditional folk music groups in the United States uh, to work as a backup instrument. And it's important to say that compared with the other instruments from the string band community, such as fiddles, banjos, flutes, mandolins, other things sometimes, the guitar was not thick enough. It was not bassy enough. It was actually losing its battle to play a nice backup. Together with the introduction of the Dreadnought guitar, this thing changed. Not only the guitar player became important in the band, but the guitar player also got an opportunity to become a soloist, a person who might step out of the crowd, step out of the string band community and sing his songs just together with his instrument for a big crowd of people listening to him only. Initially, the Martin D18 was just a particular model made by a particular guitar builder. Yet, this model, with years, became so popular among the people, so many people dreamed about it, so many people wanted to buy it, that Martin D18, up till now, has become a legend of guitar building, the legend of sound, and the legend of looks, with dozens and dozens of guitar producers from big factories to small luthier boutiques making their own interpretations of Martin D18. With all of that said, it's important to note that there's just probably one company other than Martin that is the most legit follower of the D18 tradition and that one is Sigma with its very own Sigma DM18 and Sigma SDM18 standing just by. It's fair to say that Sigma remains the most legit follower of the Martin tradition and that's not just because. It's because the Sigma company was historically established in Japan in the 1970s by the Martin Guitar Company. In the late 1960s, the American guitar market was overflooded with a uh, stream of all sorts of Japanese-made, Martin-inspired, cheap replica guitars. Martin couldn't tolerate that for too long, so that was the reason why the Martin Guitar Company, exactly in the 1970, established Sigma Guitar Company, which was also produced in Japan, and the major goal of that line was to produce affordable instruments based on the legendary Martin standards. So getting back from the 70s to the days today, we may say that the initial Martin idea and the initial Martin's initiative came to be extremely successful. And what was once a Martin Guitar's affordable daughter company has now become an independent solid guitar brand that is progressing incredibly rapidly. Like I said, the Sigma company has two models which are following and which are based on the traditional Martin D18 standard. The DM18 versus SDM18, where the S letter stands for solid dreadnought mahogany. So that exact guitar is now in my hands. So this guitar is practically following all possible sizing, material, coloring, 
sounding lines that the Martin Guitar Company set creating its D18 instrument. So there's not a single thing different in this instrument from the original Martin D18. But it's fair to mention the DM18 as well. This instrument features some differences from the classical Martin D18 setup with just the top being solid here and the composite material replacing the ebony fretboard and bridge. So there's one more thing for us to fix. Say we manage to fool your eyes. So the next question is whether we'll manage to fool our ears. So let's take a listen at all of these three D18 instruments and finalize things up with having a little talk of what these may be. So now we've had a look at all the three, and we've listened to them, we've touched them, we've had a look. And 
Now it's time for us to say just a couple of words about what they feel like. The first thing that's important, they all feel traditional. They all feel authentic and they all feel like just the thing. What I mean is they do not have some fancy decorations. Neither of them has any golden inlays or mother of pearl bindings or anything like that. They're all here to represent this traditional Martin D18 style, which was born in the beginning of the 20th century for the traditional American music and had since then become the legend of the musical instrument building and playing worldwide. At the same time, it's probably important to mention that, of course, the all solid instruments like the actual Martin D18 and the Sigma SDM18 do bring you a deeper feel and a whole thicker sound. Yet at the same time, it's fair to say that the Sigma DM18, that as I said previously, does not mention and does not have any solid back or sides, it's nevertheless a solid sounding instrument that does not have such a big difference if you compare it with the all solid ones. Summarizing things up after we have touched the three, played the three, discussed the three and heard the three, it's important to say that the D18, it seems, is the shortest shortcut, shortest shortcut to get closer to the music that your favorite musician produced. Probably it sounds stupid. I'm saying sorry for that right now. But I guess we all dream and we all want to look a little bit like our favorite musician, to sound a little bit like they did, and to make a little bit of a contribution to the world of music as they did. These three are straightforward instruments made for making music and nothing more. They are a guitars for the people, honest instruments that will accompany you in all the ways you go.